Hi guys, it's Mandy here. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about a sort of experience that I've had and it sort of made me think about things very differently, which is the new series called The Chosen. It's had some really major breakthroughs with me, which is great. I love it. It's probably for me been the only adaptation of Christ's story that has seriously affected me and has changed my perspective on a lot of things that have happened in my life and the history of his life as well. I say that I'm not a Christian because I don't like labeling myself because I don't believe in putting myself in a box of religious titles. I believe in this and this is the only way I can worship. And if you're not doing it like that, then you're not a Christian. So, so I just simply say I'm not a Christian. But I do believe in Jesus as a man. And the reason why it affected me so much was because it was telling his story as him, as a man, not just as the son of God. I've never cried so much watching anything, really. I literally, on several occasions, I just, I, I literally burst into tears and I was just like, oh my God, this is incredible. And I've been crying sort of almost consistently throughout. <laughs> I just wanted to d discuss one particular moment in the series, which I was just thinking about. And it was interesting. It sort of occurred to me, like the scene in, I think it was the second series, episode four, I think, in which he goes to, I forget what the name of the pool is, the pool of Bethesda, I think it is or something, where he goes to heal a man who's been paralyzed for many, many years. And I thought this was very interesting. You know, initially it went right over my head. I didn't, and then it occurred to me, he says to the man, do you want to be healed? He doesn't touch the man. He just says to him, do you want to be healed? And the man, he doesn't say his answer, but he no, Jesus knows his answer. He looks at him and he, you can tell from his face, he, he basically says yes. And Jesus then says, okay, then get up and walk. And it sort of occurred to me that, you know, this is just my sort of understanding and kind of like my belief of why so many people reject Christ. I just feel like people don't believe in Christ or his teachings or God because they are so comfortable being victims of something like that paralytic man he spent years being paralyzed because he believed that being a victim was all he had in life and I think it's sad that there are people out there who they just love being victims of stuff you know, when I say like they love being victims, but it seems to be that being a victim of whatever your circumstances are seems to be your whole motive for life. You choose to believe that you're a victim of racism. You choose to believe that you're a victim of sexual abuse. You choose to believe that you're a victim of this. You choose to believe that you're a victim of that. And it seems to be the only thing that keeps you going rather than saying, no, I am not going to be a victim. I believe I am not a victim. I believe I can move forward. I believe there is goodness in the world and I am going to seek that goodness and I'm going to stop focusing on being a victim. It's like, I just feel like with everything that's going on in the world today, people who are trying to convince children to have sex changes, people who are essentially conditioning their kids to believe in racism and that they're victims of racism and people who only focus on the, the trauma of the past of their generations. It's like, you need to let go of that belief that that is all you are, that if you want to be who you are, it's nothing to do with your physical body. It's nothing to do with this. It's to do with what's in here. Your soul, your belief in your soul and your heart and your mind. That's what matters. It's not the physical. And you might think, oh, well, in that case, it doesn't matter that I go and have a sex change. But it's like, why 
do you believe that having a change of sex, having your body mutilated, is going to make you any better? Why do you believe that hearing racist remarks everywhere you go is going to make you better? Why do you believe that constantly focusing on what happened to you when you were a child and sexually abused by a parent or not even sexually, just abused, why is focusing on that going to help you? Is it going to help you? The answer is no, it's not going to help you get on with your life. It's going to hold you back in your life because you're going to see everyone as someone who's going to attack you. You're going to see traits of your parents in people and you're going to say, you're just like my father, you're just like my mother, you've abused me just like they did. And you're going to be nothing but a victim in your life. And I feel that's very sad. I think we need to learn to move on. And you know, I, for a long time, had that mentality as well, because I'm finding it really hard to forgive my parents for what they did to me. In some places, it's a lot easier to forgive because there are some explanations that make it easier for me to understand why they did what they did. But in other cases, it's very hard for me to understand, you know, their reactions to things. And I found it very, I'm finding it very hard to forgive, but I'm slowly getting there. And, you know, maybe in one or two years time, I will be able to fully forgive them and maybe I will be back in contact with them but until that time I need to slowly heal but the thing is I'm trying my best to not see myself as a victim of what happened to me in the past because I realize now that if if I do nothing but see myself as a victim I'm going to spend the rest of my life in resentment and anger and suffering and I'm going to spend almost every night bawling my eyes out because a memory popped up into my head. Is that going to happen sometime? Yeah, but it's not the only thing that has happened to me in my life. I have had a lot of good things happen to me in my life and I need to focus on the good things in my life, not just the terrible things. And I need to understand that I'm not a victim anymore. I have people who surround me now who love me. I am now in a home where people love me and appreciate me and are willing to let me be who I am and to do what I want to do without the pressure, without the yelling and screaming, without the anxiety. And I'm really grateful for that. I'm really happy about that. And I just think it's very sad that like that man who sat by that pool for many, many years, there are people who choose to remain victims of their circumstances or their past because you may be a black person or a Chinese person or, or a Hispanic person and you may be going through life believing that people are being racist against you but you're not seeing the fact that maybe there hasn't been any racism against you personally. Yeah, you might be thinking, oh, but there's racism about in our communities, you know, people are racist towards our people. Yeah, but you personally have probably not had any racism thrown at you. I have never had anyone be racist towards me. And as a result of my acknowledging that, I'm not a victim of racism. I don't sit here going, woe is me because people in Venezuela had it so bad. There is There are terrible things happening in every country. There is racism everywhere. But if you continue to focus on that, then that will be the only thing you see. You will never see the good in the world. You will never see the people who are good to you. You will never see the, the benefits of your life. You will never see the fact that you are so lucky to have what you have. I think we need to all sort of appreciate what we have. You know, ask yourself, are you poor? Are you living on the streets? Are you struggling? Are you suffering? Are you starving? Have you got no shelter? You know, if you have got modern amenities, conveniences, warmth, shelter, clothes on your back, and you have money in the bank, be grateful for that. Don't sit there saying I'm a victim of racism. 
Just be grateful for what you have. You know, I have a list on my desktop and it says here, remember that you have food, a home, a family, money, skills and passion, faith, people who support you. That's my list that I have stuck to my desktop because of the fact that I need to constantly remember what I have, not what I don't have, not what I lost, not the abuse that I went through. I, I don't need to remember all that. I need to forget that. I need to remember what I have. So that's what you need to do if you want to move past the pain and suffering of your whatever you had before. You need to remember what you have now. I mean, it, it sort of occurred to me there's a reason why God said, I am, not what I was. Focus on the am. What are you right now in this moment? Do you have a home right this minute? Do you have shelter? Do you have clothes? Do you have food? Do you have a family who loves you? Do you have a community who are willing to help you? Focus on that, not the, oh, I don't have. That's how people end up miserable because all they care about is what they don't have. So they strive to gain what they don't have. And if they never achieve it, then they will forever be miserable again. They will just continue to be miserable. So anyway, I hope that makes sense to you. And I hope that you can understand that moving forward with your life is the best thing you can do. And to not think of yourself as a victim. Okay, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.